Yo, good morning everyone. What's up? How is everybody doing? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. You're listening to the smooth sounds of Brendan Isaiah Bankston, bringing you ZBrush Anatomy today. How's everybody doing? What's up? How's everybody? Um, alright, so last time on Brendan Does ZBrush Streaming, um, we just started doing anatomy studies. Um, so <clears throat> we took uh, and started with um, just the basic skeleton that's provided in ZBrush. The uh, Ryan Kinsling uh, one, actually, that's if you can find it under tool, um, is just this one here, right? Ryan Kinsling anatomy. Um, basically, that's a really, really amazing. Um... <laughs> Sorry, Neville. <laughs> um... So anyways, yeah, it's uh, it's a really amazing model. It's, it's great for study. Ryan did an uh, amazing job on it. So um, every uh, about a, I try to do it once a year while I come in and uh, just do a, a quick study on uh, muscles and insertion points and attachment points and um, just go over uh, and re-stabilize my own um, knowledge of where the muscles are. And what muscles are where, and where they attach to uh, different bones, all that fun stuff. So, that's what we did last time. Um, <clears throat> last Monday, we went over and did this guy. Again, this is not a production model. It's not for any uh, professional use. This is just my own kind of quick and dirty way of remembering how things go. So, um, <clears throat> I'm not too focused on overall quality. Um, mostly just... Um, practice for myself and remembering what muscles go where and so on and so forth. So um, last week I did um, a quick little uh, survey at the end asking if uh, they wanted me to do the leg muscles next or facial muscles. And everybody decided that facial muscles would be fine. So that's what we're going to do. What's up, Siegel? How you doing, man? So we're pretty much going to do the whole seven minute, seven and a half minutes so far. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to do this basic same thing um, just to the face. So we're going to go over um, not all the underlying muscles, but just mostly the form-defining um, outstanding muscles. And then uh, we'll see where that goes. Yeah. Yeah, see? We'll see where that goes. Okay. Um, usually when I'm doing, so you have to bear with me, I haven't done the actual facial muscles in a very long time. Probably almost 10 years. So, what's up, Doug? How you doing, buddy? Um, I remember most of them, but I got my handy dandy cheat notes. Oh, yeah. Uh, so basically what I do when I'm doing anatomy stuff, um, especially for insertion points, I'll just do, you know, uh, I think before I did uh, just anatomy, muscle, insertion points. Uh, it was really good for breaking down <clears throat> um, per muscle, uh, you know, where they actually insert and where they attach and that kind of stuff. So um, this is really good for kind of breaking down muscles uh, specifically down to single ones. Um, so we'll probably be using a lot of this one today. Uh, this one's actually really good. Uh, so it labels it, shows you pretty much where they attach. Mordecainer, what's up, buddy? So this is pretty much the one that we're going to use today. So again, if you want to follow along, I just, um, just typed in face anatomy muscle insertion points. And then we'll uh, go, we'll go from here. So some of the major ones we'll go over real quick. Um, uh, obviously the frontalis, um, the obicularis oculi, which are these two, uh, the obicularis oris, which is the one that goes around the lips, um, the zygomaticus, zygomaticus minor and major, um, as well as the levator labi, which is this one here. Um, we'll get into the mentalis and the depressor labi and the depressor anguli oris. 
So these are some of the really important ones for the front of the face. Again, the corrugator um, is also pretty important under here, but that's usually underneath um, the um, frontalis and the um, orbicularis oculi. So I'm not going to focus too much on the underlying stuff, right? So there's going to be like you know tons of stuff in here, but I'm really just going to focus on the form-defining muscles on the outside. That's really what I'm going to do. And there's like you know fat pockets and stuff to like fill in the gaps. So when we look at um, like a final image, it'll be something more kind of along the lines of this, um, where it'll be kind of holy, right? And I'm not going to have like a bunch of uh, the the fat pockets and stuff in here. So keep that in mind. All right, well let's let's get rolling. Let's get rolling. So um, I'm just going to put in an eyeball first. Um, so let's do brush insert. We're going to do primitives. Let's just grab a sphere. We'll turn on symmetry. Might be a little bit bigger than that, but we'll see. Eh, somewhere around there. Sure, that sounds good. Again, so I'm going to reiterate this a couple of times during this uh, this stream, is that this is really just practice for me. Um, so I'm not worried about like overall quality and exactness, just on refreshing my own memory of how and where things connect and why they work the way that they're working. All right, so say maybe something like that. Actually, yeah, maybe these can come out just a touch. So you guys have questions along the way, always more than welcome to uh, help out. Or if you'd like to follow along, that will work too. I'm going to work. start with um, the side of the head. So I'm going to work with the, um, the temporalis and the masseter, which comes in here. Uh, so basically what I do <coughs> is I will just uh, use the insert, me insert mesh. Uh, so we'll just do primitive. Um, I usually will just do a sphere like this. And then I do split unmasked points. And then I'll go to that one. And then I'll just do a quick dynamesh. And then from there I'll just kind of get this stuff into place. So it's going to be fairly quick and dirty. Um, okay, we're looking at... this one here. All right, so the masseter, it consists of smaller ones, um, but for the sake of uh, speed, we'll just make this one big one here. Um, so it's going to attach right there to the zygomatic arch, and it's going to go from there to there. Okay. So it's going to come around like this. It's going to go connect up here. Again, I'm not too worried about the inside um, of what everything everything looks like, so I'm not not really going to spend a lot of time making sure that it's th as thin as it needs to be. Uh, let's do back face mask on that guy. So this is masseter, right? And it did connect up a little bit further up here. Something like that. What's up, Gary? How you doing, buddy? Okay, so that's a masseter. All right, and then we're gonna do the um, the mentalis. I always forget to 
and Talus is the one uh, that's on the side of the head. Temporalis. Temple. The Temporalis. Okay, so the cool thing about the Temporalis, um, and we're going to go ahead and hide the masseter here real quick. The really, really awesome thing about um, the Temporalis is this is basically your bike bite mechanic. So um, it comes in here and attaches to the side of the skull. And then it actually goes, through, there's actually supposed to be a hole right here. Um, but it goes through the inside of the zygomatic arch and connects to the coronoid process of the mandible. Right, so that basically um, is your bite power, right? So that's the one that contracts and um, controls the strength of your bite, basically. So let's do that one. All right, so B, I. I'm just going to go ahead and drop this guy into there. We'll do split unmasked points. Go back to this guy. We'll do Dynamesh. Go back to my move tool, and then we'll just kind of get this guy going. Okay. So this guy's gonna come all, all up in here, and he actually comes down and connects down to this coronoid process. You take it easy there, color monkey. I'm in the middle of something. No respect around here. Okay, something like that. All right, let's just kind of clean up these edges just a touch. Okay. So let's look really quickly at... There we go. This one's actually really good. Whatever... Um... Whichever one this is is actually really good. Dental hygiene. Really, that's weird. Anyway, so um, <coughs> so it goes on the inside. You see the zygomatic arch is cut right here and right here. So this goes on the inside, um, and it goes fairly, fairly far back here. Fans out, and then lays just behind the zygomat uh, the um, the the side of the zygomatic. The uh, I was forget what that part's called. Okay, so this will come out here, most of the way out here. All right, so that's why we hid the masseter, is so that we can get this guy coming in here. And actually, I think. Let's say it just connects like that. Okay, so let's do that guy. Actually, you know what? Let's increase, let's say, let's say 208. That's a little bit better. Um, a lot of times I'll just come in with a trim dynamic where it connects and just kind of knock down that thickness here just to make it look a little bit better it's not so not so crazy looking so come in here so what's really cool is is uh when you look at other skulls like uh, like animal skulls and you see how much muscle is um here uh, like how big the actual temporalis is compared to um uh, bite strength, right? So like if you look like a, at a bear skull, like check this out. This is actually really cool. I've done a lot of research on um, on skulls, especially the human skull. Um, but when you start looking at, um, so let's just look at bear skull. Like check this out. All right. so following that same thing, right? So this is the temporalis up here. <clears throat> Where so this muscle comes all the way up and connects basically all the way up to the t 
top of the skull and all the way back here. And look how big this zyg this um, uh, uh, coronoid process is on the mandible. See how much <clears throat> you just get an idea of what the type of bite strength a bear has. All this is muscle up here, tied right to that, <laughs> right to that man mandible. It's, for, it's it's crazy. Look at that. That's so much muscle, right? All right down to there. Just eat your face, man. Eat your face. And then uh, when you look at like say a um, uh, this is looks like a horse, right? So it's quite a bit smaller. Right? The coronary process is crazy, right? That's so cool. I did something else. This is a uh, tiger, polar bear. Look at that. Isn't that nuts? I don't know. I geek out about this stuff. All right, so that's the temporalis. <clears throat> All right, so let's turn on. So there we go. That's the masseter. That's the temporalis. Um, let's start working with uh, the eye now. It's actually fairly quick. This probably won't take the whole time, so maybe we'll do this one, and then we'll also do um, we'll start blocking in the leg. <laughs> you don't want to know the muscles of a lion. It's pretty damn close to the muscles of a human. Yeah, but the, like if you look at lion too, like what's this? It's it's fairly similar. Like if you put those um, those teeth next to that bite strength, like look at that. Like there's almost no skull back here. Look at that. Isn't that nuts? Like this, this is like no skull. This is all bite. Yeah, that's 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 some crazy stuff, man. African lion. That's crazy. Anywho. Okay, uh, let's do, <coughs> so we're going to do abicularis, <coughs> abicularis oculi, which is basically, um, I guess you can call it a sphincter muscle, right? So it's, it's a muscle that contracts like this, right? So let's do that. Muscles of monkeys. It's pretty much the same thing. <laughs> Alright, so let's do the pen go. Alright, so let's let's do the obicularis oculi now. So what I'm gonna do is uh this guy this guy I'm just gonna dupe this one and then Dynamesh. My virus alert go off. I'm oh, sorry, man. One of the things that I've realized uh, is that I do kind of cough a lot, so uh, you'll have to excuse me. Sorry. Let's do 208. As far as I'm thinking and chewing is tied together, as far as I know, thinking excites the stomach, much like chewing. That's interesting, Seagull. I was joking. Okay, cool. Sometimes uh, through text, it's hard to know if people are. Hey, why aren't you? Mask must be clear. There's no mask. What the? F oh, that's why. Got it. Got it. Okay. So let's uh, delete hidden. There we go. Now I can dynamash. Hey, 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 there it is. Okay, good. <coughs> Damn it. Yeah, I, re yeah, I realize that when I do stream, I, I do that quite a bit, so. I try to I, I try to go back and, and be wary of, uh, you know, presentation skills and stuff. You, when, you, when you do it enough, you're like, do I say uh a lot? Do I say duh? Do I say dumb stuff a lot? You know. It's good to kind of know if you're doing really annoying stuff. You know what I mean? All right, so this 
we're just going to bring this guy out. And I'm basically just going to sculpt this guy in. Alright, so let's bring this guy back. Alright, where where is it connecting? Alright, so it's going to go all the way up here above uh, the brow of the skull. And it's going to go about halfway down, just above, just below the... Um, um, God, I always forget what the hell is that called. There's an outport uh, where a bunch of uh, nerves come out of the skull here in the zygomatic arch. So it will be just above that, and then it'll it'll go all the way to the outside of the arch. Humidity issues. I don't know. I think it's a lot. It's talking issues, really. And that and I've been fighting a cold for a while, so. All right, so let's just get the overall where the insertion points happen. All right, so this is going to come all the way above. All right, we can turn on ghosting here real quick just to see. One badass pair of glasses. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um... Again, so I, I have a lot of uh, um, keys mapped to visual stuff of uh, shortcuts for me. So a lot of times I'll, I'll just use V for uh, solo. Um, I'll use Shift V for ghosting or transparency. You guys can find that under uh, transform transparency. I just uh, map that to Shift Z, Shift V for me. And then uh, Shift F is uh, uh, polyframe. So I'm going to jump back and through those. Yeah. This reminds me of, um, what was that movie, They? That old, like, 80s flick. Okay. So this will come up here. Something like that. Here's the... Okay. And then... How you like that? I muted my mic. Take that, sucker. <laughs> Alright. Um, so I'm just going to come in here and do a little bit of sculpting. Alright, so this is going to come in. Hehehehehe. <laughs> Yeah. You're like, oh, this thing does this, and then everything just goes to crap, right? Um, I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit more padding back here, just so that I can... sculpt this in a little bit better. Okay. So, Obicular's Oculi. Alright. So, this is going to come in. It really is going to come to a little bit more of a point, right, where it connects to the bridge of the, uh, the nose here. Alright, and this is just going to sit on top of spaghetti all covered in... No, that's wrong song. Wrong song. <laughs> it's early for me, guys. It's like 6 a.m. I haven't had much coffee either. Okay, so it's going to come to a point. Um, usually, when when I'm I'm working from uh, like illustrations like this, and I, I try not to stay with one style uh, because it's one particular artist or one source so I'm looking right here of kind of like how things come to a little bit of a point here so I'm curious right so my own mind thinks alright well is that just how they depict it how this artist how this entity uh, depicts it so I'm gonna go somewhere else real quick and see what they look like right so it's a little bit more kinda of oval a little bit more oval and this is all very simplified stuff, so 
Um, I mean, you can get really down and dirty and, and into it by looking up... Um, very specific, like, uh, surgery-looking things, but I'm not going to go all that far. So it looks like a, a lot of these other ones are more just oval. I don't really get into too much when it comes down to uh, what the corner of the obicularis oculi looks like. Right, it's still very... So I'm not going to pay too much attention to how that part looks. Okay, well, we won't go too crazy with this. Again, so so I'm like, nah, I don't know if it really, uh, whatever. Everybody's a little bit different too, so I'm not too worried about it. Let's redo that. Let's just, there we go. And then let's just clean up the edges real quick. I uh, will come in with Trim Dynamic and just kind of knock down these edges. Sometimes what I'll do too is just come back in and do, just so that it doesn't look so weird, I'll just do a little bit of the eye eyelids just to make it not so weird looking. Let's maybe go 256. Okay, Bicularis oculi. That's good enough for now. All right, so I know that there's uh, that one there, and it's going to give me plenty of room to work with the Zygomaticus uh, and the labii in there. Okay, so in that same vein, let's um, do the Bicularis oris, which is basically the same muscle that just goes around um, the lips. After coffee. Okay, much better. <laughs> Alright, so basically the same thing. I'm just going to come in here. We're going to do brush, insert, grab my primitives. Um, let's... let's turn off symmetry for now. And then let's just grab one of these guys. Put them in there. That's fine. We'll do split unmasked points. Grab back to this guy. And then let's continue with 256. I like that. There we go. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is just do mirror and then mirror and, mirror and weld. <clears throat> just so that I can work in symmetry now. Okay, let's look at how this, the abicularis oris works. Right, so I always kind of go back and forth on whether I should do the lips or not. At this point, I'm not going to do the lips, but we'll see <laughs> after I put it in. Maybe I'll decide that I I want to do the lips. <laughs> Yeah, this one's actually really good. We'll probably work from this one for a little while. Thanks, Twist. Again, this is this is all just to kind of show you guys how I study. Um, and kind of the, the the things... So the reason, whole reason for this study is to, to reestablish the underlying thinking that is happening whenever I'm doing sculpting, right? So I'm always thinking about, okay, well, you know, the 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 side of the skull comes up here 
um, when I'm sculpting, but I know that there's a little bit of a bulge here for the temporalis, and then, you know, you're going to see uh, the zygomatic arch uh, just underneath the skin, but I know the masseter comes out, uh, you know, just below that, so that's what creates that nice, like, um, silhouette this way, right? So these are the things that I'm thinking about subconsciously uh, because I've done this so many times that I, I know it, you know? Um, so it's, this exercise is really just to reestablish that underlying knowledge that I'm thinking about whenever I'm doing the actual sculpting. You know what I mean? Know what I mean, man? Know what I mean? Okay, so <clears throat> let's go ahead and look at the teeth here. Yeah, let's uh, let's do that, and then let's go ahead and knock this down a little bit with uh, some trim dynamic. Again, these are all really thin muscles, right? You're not gonna really see anything super crazy. Alright, so we're just gonna be right on the other side of the the uh the skeleton there. Okay. And then we'll use a uh, move brush and we'll just pull these out just a touch. Push those in. It looks kind of weird without the lips, huh? Thinking maybe we should do the lips real quick. We'll see. We'll continue and then we'll see. <laughs> okay, let's actually add a little bit more resolution to this guy. So 256. That's better. Okay, so let's talk about um, the the rest of these connection points, the zygomaticus major and minor, and the uh, levator oris, as well as the, well, yeah, this one's not really too form-defining. So when I'm thinking about, when I'm sculpting, I don't really think about this one, but I always think about the la uh, levator labi which is the one that runs up the side um, and connects here. So there's there's three major, uh, well, no, four major ones, right? So there's the um, levator labi here. There's the zygomaticus major and minor. I think those might be flipped, actually. I'll have to look into that. I don't remember if this is the major and this is the minor or vice versa. Um, but the rhizorus, which connects to the corner of the bicularis uh, oris, and connects to the mandible back here, um, and then the depressor. All right, so we'll work on those real quick. All right. So let's do the the levator labi superior aculi nasi muscle. <laughs> what did you just say? This one right here. So it's going to connect just on uh, so many fancy names <laughs> for yucky stuff, I know, right? All right, so we'll work on this one first, right? So it inserts um, uh, kind of in the middle of the uh, the nasal bone here on the side, runs down the side, and then connects uh, towards the upper part of the um, epicularis uh, orus. Right, I'm uh, so back in high school, I was made to take a um, like a half a semester of Latin. I really, really, really hated it at the time, but ever since then, I was so happy. Like, oh yeah, I do, I know that. I'm big of theirs. Yeah, yeah, I got that. <laughs> it helped out a ton. All right, so let's do brush insert. We'll grab our primitives. Prim primitives. We'll do that. Split unmask. Go back to this dude. We'll do Dynamesh. And then we'll just start moving this dude in place.
So we're going to throw this one right up here. All right, so it's a fairly thin one um, that comes down. Same with my typewriting class. My father made me take a typewriting class when I was in high school, and I, God, I hated it. Man, I'm so happy I did now. <laughs> I can actually type without looking at the keyboard. It's awesome. <laughs> All right. So it uh, fans out a little bit. Um, it kind of bisects a little um, when it comes down here. So we're just going to pull this out just a touch. And then we'll just pull this guy in. I'm just going to run it underneath the um, Oris here. All right, then let's let's kind of push all this in. Again, these aren't these aren't very thick muscles, so they're not going to stick out too much. Let's do that. Let's actually add another. Let's go 512 here. Let's do 512. There we go. Yeah, but Latin really helped me. Um, it really actually helped when I was learning Spanish as well, too. Um, a lot of the Romance languages um, use a lot of the Latin roots, and especially with anatomy. Yeah, it helped out a ton when I, went, when I was uh, doing all of my anatomy studies back in school. I was like, oh, yeah, I know what that is. Yeah, that's the thing. The superior anterior prominence. I was like, oh, yeah, that's the front uh, lower, no, for superior, the front upper. Um, I worked in the, uh, the medical and dental industry for a while, too, so it really helped uh, that. Really helped there. Well, yeah, I mean, technically, because um, English derived itself from Latin, right? Okay, so then what I'm going to do is just do a quick little sculpty sculpt here. All right, just with some damn standard. And now we can see a little bit of separation there. Super quick and easy. All right, so that's the... Uh, Levator Lebi. Okay. All right. And then we're going to do the Zygomatic, uh, Zygomaticus Major and Minor. All right. So the Major is just one, and it goes from just to the left side of the... God, I always forget what the holes are for. Um, oh, man. What is it called? It's just going to bug me here real quick. Hold on. Uh, let's look at... Um, Jaw uh, anatomy. There it is. Mental framing. That's what it's called. If you look at this, this is the mental framing. They're called. It's a framing. Yeah, that's what it is. Um, let's do. Let's do skull. So I'm thinking that, here it is, infraorbital foramen. So foramen is the exit or the hole, and infraorbital, right? So that's what that's called, foramen. But this is what I'm, I was using a lot during, in the dental industry, is the mental foramen here. So what happens is the, um, the nerve comes down the inside of the jaw, and runs on the inside, and then runs through the middle of the jaw, comes out the mental frame, and, and then sprays out through here. This is why you get all, like, you can feel all this right here. Same thing with the, um, the inf infraorbital frame. Is why, that's why you can feel all that, all the nerves that come out of the um, skull right there and just kind of flay out. That's what all these holes are for. These little ones in, um, in the skull. <laughs> Bet you didn't know that, did you? No, I'm just kidding. That's that's general knowledge. I'm sure everybody knows it. So infraorbital foramen. That's actually this one right here. 
Okay, so let's put that. So we'll do um, fresh insert, grab that. I'm going to throw that guy in there. Split on mass points. Go back to this dude. We'll do 256. <laughs> right, sir? Sir Maxim? Pig Latin. Yeah, I know, right? I learned a lot of Pig Latin on back in the day, too. Okay, so then let's just grab this guy. And we're going to say that he comes in. Yeah, I know Latin. Pig Latin. So this is going to come just from the other side of that infraorbital foramen. Uh, again, let's do mirror and weld and turn on symmetry. Okay. So this is um, where you get a lot of that, uh, where the face kind of fills in around the skull. So we're calling this as a zygomaticus minor, major, major. Okay, and then this is going to connect down here, right next to, I think it goes actually right next to, yeah, right next to the abicularis, uh, Oris. Luis, what's up, dude? How you doing, man? All right, so let's do a little bit of trim dynamic. Throw this down there. Okay. Again, this is just study, so I'm not. It's not a production model or anything. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Just getting the overall placement. All right there, we go. Um, let's do a little bit of polish on this one, just to bring it down. Doesn't look horrible. Okay, cool. And then for this one, we're just going to... Um, what's up, Freyr? How you doing, buddy? We're going to duplicate this guy. By the way, um, I have to give a shout-out to, to Pixelogic and all the other streamers um, that have been giving their time to, uh, to stream on this channel. Uh, do believe that we just passed 10,000 followers. Holla! 10,000 followers. Thank you everybody uh that's followed um and all your guys' awesome feedback and love and support uh for the channel uh pixelogic does absolutely amazing amazing stuff i'm always happy to come and, and give my time to those guys so um really awesome to to be able to hit a, a milestone like that so uh thank you to all all of everyone's who have uh followed Feel the love, man. Feel the love. Well, the rest of the nose is actually... This is all cartilage up here. So probably won't get to the cartilage since we're doing um, mostly just... Uh, muscles. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is I'm just... So I duplicated that guy and then we're just going to bring him down here like this. Like this. All right, so this is going to go more towards the corner. Follower hype, right? I know, 10,000. Dude, that's crazy. Big up to all you guys. And thank you for your thank you for your support. You guys remember those old Bottles and James commercials? <laughs> God, that was a long time ago. And thank you for your support. Okay. So, uh, where does the Zygomaticus minor fall? So, somewhere in between uh, where it kind of curves, start curving, curves in, right? So, about halfway in between um, the eye socket and the bottom edge of the Zygomatic arch. And it looks like it goes a little bit more toward the corner of the Bicularisaurus. And then it looks like it splits as well. 
So we'll, well, we'll add that little split. What the hell? What the hell, man? I'm going to live dangerously today. Danger's my middle name. All right, so let's scroll this guy in here. This is going to be a little bit wider than the major. Yeah, something like that. I think this one will actually bring down a little bit. Something like that. Again, I don't want to spend too much time uh, on the the small little crazy details. Okay, so we've got Zy Zygomaticus Major, Zygomaticus Minor. And then maybe what we'll do is just... Yeah, I don't think I'm having enough resolution to do that. We'll just leave that as one. So technically, it does do like a little split. Um, so it has like a little muscle rolling down here. Should we do that one? Eh, what the hell? I think we should do it. Yeah, let's do it. What the hell? We'll just dupe it. So just going to smooth this guy down a little bit. I'm just going to move him up. Maybe rotate just a touch. Like that. Like that. Just make sure the flat side is out. Something like that. Okay, cool. And then let's just do... Let's just duplicate this dude. Um, and then we'll just smooth this way down. Turn on ghosting. And then we'll just do this. Yeah, that works. This is going to come down here. Then we're just going to duck this guy underneath. Look at that. Facial anatomy practice. That's what this is. That's what we're doing, buddy. Buddy pal. I'm not your buddy guy. I'm not your friend, pal. All right. This one, though, I do need to bring back in. Because there is a, a slight separation in between the Zygomaticus major and minor here. Okay. That's a little better. Yeah, we'll work with that. Okay. So then um, let's do the Rhizorus. Rhizus. Rhizorus which goes from the mandible to the corner of the orbicularis orus. So we're just going to do the same thing. We're going to grab this to actually, you know what, let's hide the masseter for now. All right, so let's grab this dude. We're going to duplicate that guy. And then uh, let's just get him into place. He's going to go back there. Something like that. Let's actually... Yeah. 
There we go. So a lot, a lot of times the move tool um, can be really helpful when you just have the, the basic shape. And you're already ready to roll. Okay, so that comes down there. We're going to say this is going to go to there, which means that this, all this stuff needs to come back up a little bit. This guy will bring back up. So sometimes this stuff can be a little bit boring um, when you're when you're just watching. So thanks for thanks for hanging out and learning with me, studying, studying. There we go. So the um, the zyg the zygomatic zygomaticus um, major and minor. Um, really do a good job of filling out um, the front of this cheek, right? Because you have this huge uh, hole, basically, this empty space that's filled with a lot of like inner muscles as well as uh, some fat and stuff too. So um, the, these ones really help fill out um, the front of the face. All right, let's turn the masseter back on. Where did he go? There we go. All right, so that's how we're rolling so far. We're doing pretty good. Um, we'll do one more for this area right now, and then we'll get back into the chin stuff uh, in a little bit. But we'll do the depressor anguli, which is going to be here. All right, so again, it connects... Um, I think it's going to connect to the front side of the apicularis oris, and it's connect down right down to the chin down here. Uh, how much of this do you use in your day-to-day -day character creation? So uh, this stuff is is really the things that are going on behind the scenes when I'm when I'm sculpting faces, right? So in order to know how to sculpt a face you need to know what the forms are doing right why it's doing it especially if you're doing like different um, um, uh, expressions or something right being able to know why the forms are doing the things that they're doing is super 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 important right so um, this but this I don't actively think about this stuff I, I've studied the this content for a very very long time so it's kind of the stuff that happens behind the scenes when I'm thinking, right? So I'm like, oh, the you know the shape of uh, you know the shape of the head over here, right? And I'm looking at when I'm sculpting, right? I'm like, okay, well I know that like a lot of the bone you can see the corner here. Um, yeah, this is very subconscious uh, level stuff when I'm when I'm actually uh, sculpting faces, or even. Um, uh, bodies, right? So it's knowing what's going on underneath um, and practicing that and knowing it so that your subconscious can uh, roll with that as you're making the decisions uh, about what's going on uh, on the skin. You know what I mean? So this is just practice. It's super, super important to be able to go back and, and really um, get all of this stuff uh, regrounded because um, you'll go back and you'll you'll forget all this stuff again and again, just like I did. But you you basically know, you're like, oh yeah, I've you know, I got the jaw muscle over here, okay, that connects up there, okay, got it. You know, what, what, uh, where is there lots of muscle, where is there no muscle, where is there very thin muscle, right? And like, when you're looking at the, the zygomatic arch, um, you know, when you're looking at this at three quarter, right, you're looking at, you know, this, right? So the bone, comes out, but you're going to see a lot of the muscle and fat that come in here, right? Yo, Ashley, what's up? What up, girl? How you doing, Ashley? A cubed. Um, I'm sure you guys all know Ashley. She's another great creature artist that streams here as well. <coughs> a shout out to uh, A cubed. Give her a follow for sure. She does some awesome freaking dope work. Dope, dope. Uh, aside from behind the scenes, inside your subconscious, also mean like behind the scenes poster on your right. Yeah, that one. This one. This one. Yeah, right here. 
this guy. Um, this this poster is actually more based on um, uh, the points of it's uh, it's based on uh, um, something called cephalometrics, which are which the dental industry uses to track different points in the skull, um, and so they can predict uh, growth patterns and uh, they are able to predict like problems um, beforehand. Uh, right, you know, so if like the angle of the jaw is, you know, less than blah, 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 then, you know, if it's within this range, you may have some issues in two to three years or something like that. Right, you like that hat? I love this hat. This is like one of my favorite hats now, by the way. And I'm not just saying that because I'm streaming here and that I love Pixlogic. It's actually a really nice hat. Um, Okay. Do, 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 do. We were doing Depressor Anguli. Welcome, Ashley, to um, Anatomy uh, Practice, a.k.a. Latin Practice. Okay, so let's do that. So we're going to go grab this guy, so brush, insert, primitives. We're just going to throw this guy down here. We'll do split unmasked points. Go back to this dude. We'll do, let's say, 256. Emma, what's up? How you doing? Let's do Marin Weld. How are you, Emma? What up? Okay, so the Depressor Anguli, again, we're looking at this dude here. So uh, let's say on the outside corner of the abicular's uh, orus, and then right down through here. Yay, anatomy pre I know, me too. I was like, man, what am I going to work on now that, like, now that I've, I've kind of got out of the ZBrush um, part of my last character? I'm like, oh, dude, anatomy, yes. Lurk and learn, yep, absolutely. All right, so we're going to go like this. And we're just going to pull this dude out here. Okay, let's turn on symmetry this time. There we go. There we go. How you been, Ashley? I haven't, uh, I've been away from Twitch for, for a while. Busy looking for jobs and stuff. How's, how's the, how's the Twitch world been? How's streaming? How's all that fun stuff? All right, so let's uh, let's go back to trim dynamic, and we'll just knock this down a little bit here. We do have some new streamers um, on Pig's Logic channel. Encourage you guys to check out the new guys and gals. Um, let's see, I think we got uh, Blair. I just forget how to say her last name. Armitage. Ar Armitage. I forget. I'm just slaughter her last name. Sorry, Blair. Um, Tony Leonard, really, really amazing, amazing artist. Well, they're all, all, all are really. Uh, who are some of the other new new newbies? Joe Mena. What? Joe? Oh, Joe. Okay. We'll say that's good. Okay, um, and you know what? what, yeah, we'll do the chin here in a little bit, I want to get back to, um, the, let's do, let's, alright, so I said that we're going to do just the, the form defining, um, but I think we're going to do these ones real quick, just because they're super, super important, um, a lot of times, uh, the corrugators uh, will kind of get passed over, but they're really, really important, especially for like all the mean, evil frowns uh, that that we all do all the time. You know, yeah, maybe we'll get to that one too. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Um, but these uh, live pretty much under the frontalis. Well, maybe on top of. Let's see. You know what? This is another good chance to look at um, different work. Hey, everybody's doing yeah. 
good, man. They, the things the things are good. Um, I actually landed at uh, Crystal Dynamics. Um, actually, start a week from right now at Crystal Dynamics. I'm freaking stoked. Super, super stoked. So my question is: Do the does the Frontalis actually sit above uh, the corrugator? <coughs> this one. Yeah, man. Oh, man. I'm, uh, I'm so stoked. Beyond stoked. Let's look at this guy. This is uh, this one's actually pretty good. Still kind of unclear. So it looks like there's a cutaway here. So the frontalis actually comes over. Then the corrugator is underneath. Let's see if we can get a little bit more... I'm 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 interested to know. ML, I want to know. Yeah. A lot of these drawings, it's it's really tough to to kind of get the actual. Oh, this. See, this is this is different, right? So this one says that the zygomaticus major is this one here, and the zygomaticus minor is that one here. Whereas, this one. said that this is the major and this is the minor. What? So you gotta be careful. Gotta be careful when you're using um, a lot of this, you know, art artistic um, renditions of anatomy. Gotta be careful. So this one says that this is the minor and then this is the major. Okay. So I'm gonna go with the fact that, oops. No, stop it. Thank you. So this one, this one is the minor, and this one is the major, which makes more sense. Makes more sense. Okay. So let's do the corrugator. Actually, you know what? We're just gonna grab this dude. We're gonna duplicate him, and we're just gonna pull him up here like this. Like this. Um, so the corrugator um, is kind of your frowning muscles, right? Which are always fun to do. Alright, so where do they connect? That's the question. Where do they connect? Du -du 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 -du. This guy. Okay, so it's going to go underneath what those that nose muscle was. I think we had... Where was it? This one here. Alright, so this is the uh, Proceris. A little late. <laughs> What's up, boy, for you? It's actually super early for me. It's only 7 o'clock in the morning here. So this is the Proceris, uh, which uh, the corrugator is actually going to sit underneath the Proceris, right? And then the the other one's going to sit on top of all that. Yeah, that's it. Okay, cool. Got it. All right. So these are going to sit... I guess the other question is, is do they sit underneath the obicularis oculi or above it or beside it? So this one, it looks like this, they're just kind of noting that this is where the um, the corrugator is. So I'm going to say it goes beside it and connects down here to the side of the uh, nasal bone. Again, this is this this one I'm just kind of doing for the fun of it because it's not really a form-defining muscle, but it's super important when it comes down to um, you know all the the mean expressions. <laughs> uh, let's turn that back on. There we go. Um, sometimes if I, things get a little bit too crazy, I'll just do a quick inflate. 
and then re mesh, pull that guy back in. So it all really depends on the person. All this can be a little bit different. Depending on what your skull structure looks like, so on and so forth. All right, so let's duplicate this guy one more time. Then we'll take and just rotate. And this is going to be um, the top of the, that nasal muscle. Like that. Again, this is all going to be underneath the frontalis. Okay, this is going to duck behind these guys. So this is all very thin. Thin, thin stuff. Okay. Cool. That's good enough for now. Uh, and then we'll throw the frontalis on there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. My daughter, uh, she's like two and a half. She just started um, getting into the whole, like, skeletons thing. Um, so she's like, every time she sees a skeleton, she says, Skeleton! Skeleton! Everywhere. It's so awesome. <laughs> okay, let's look at the frontalis. Du, 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 du. Okay, let's let's just do frontalis muscle. Um, zomboids. Uh, do, do, do. It's part of the skeleton army. Yes, I am. Um, you know, explain uh, quick, simple terms just how much more limited ZBrush Core is than uh, ZBrush. <laughs> Tell his dishwasher. Um, yeah, basically, uh, from what I understand, and you. you don't take my exact word from it because uh, I'm not a ZBrush employee. Um, but uh, it you've got all the major stuff like Dynamesh. Um, like the things that are missing are kind of like the more advanced stuff like Array Mesh, Nano Mesh, Fiber Mesh. Um, some of those types of things. Um, for the most part, it's got a lot of good stuff. Thank you, Gary. I really appreciate that. Okay, let's look at the frontalis. Um, but yeah, you've got a, a, a lot of the stuff from... It looks like they may be intertwined, but okay. Again, that's just a drawing. Okay, okay. Does it go all the way back? Well, the majority of the muscle um, is actually up here, right? So let's, let's see if we can find a better one. It's a little bit better. All right, so we'll bisect this one. So I'm going to say that... Definitely not that one. I'm trying to see where it gets connecting. It looks like it ducks underneath the abicularis oculi. It looks like the corrugator may be above it. Okay, that's good enough. Yeah, maybe not some of the other brushes. I don't know if it has Z Modeler brush or not. Um, but you have a lot of the the core stuff from Z Brush in there. Um, pretty sure it has Poly Paint as well. Okay, let's do this. So brush insert primitives. Let's do. This we'll do a uh, split unmasked. Go back to this dude. We're gonna go say 256 Dynamesh and then back to my move brush. 
Um, all the stuff that I'm doing here, you can do in, in ZBrush Core. If that helps. So it kind of tapers off this way. So it comes back here. Again, I'm, I'm not going to do all the thin sheet um, that kind of continues back over the, back, the rest of the skull. It's more um, just going to do the, the majority of the actual thick muscle that's in here. And again, this is all really dependent on the person. Um, as long as you get kind of understand the majority of how it works and where all the insertion points are, um, those are the most common things. Uh, there's usually a little bit of space between the um, the temporalis and the mentalis. Mentalis? No. I always forget this one. Frontalis. What really messes me up is that the mentalis, which is you think it would be like this one or this one, mentalis is actually down here on the chin. You're like, wait, what? Who did that? So this is frontalis and temporalis. Who made that decision that the mental, the mentalis should be on the chin? I mean, seriously, come on, guys. What the hell? <laughs> so there's a little bit of space in between these two here. I'm just going to pull this guy, this stuff in. And that's the nice part about um, using these as, as different um, subtools, is that you could just really quickly and easily duck them in, move them around. Importing your models from other programs would be something that is a must for me. I'm fairly certain you can import um, uh, FBXs and OBJs in core. You'd have to look that up, though. Um, you could always reach out to support and see the Pixelogic support. Okay, something like that. Let's see. I think it's going to be a little bit closer in here. It's going to come down all the way to the uh, oculi here. It's going to duck just underneath the Picularis oculi. Yeah, that's good enough. All right, and then we'll just kind of clean up the edges here, just so they're not fugly. Just thin those out a little bit. Again, not a production model, just a study. <clears throat> Let's probably thin these guys out too. A touch. There's really not a whole lot of um, distance in between <clears throat> these muscles um, coming out, you know what I mean? They're very, very thin in there. Okay. Things are looking good. All right, so we've got a lot of the major ones, right? We've got uh, the frontalis. We've got the tempora temporalis over here. Let's get thin this out a little bit more, too. We've got the obicularis oculi. We've got the corrugator. Um, I always forget what this one's called. Um, the, uh, lay-by, let's forget that one it's called, too. The levitate, levator anguli, that's what that one's called, this one here. Um, so then we've got the zygomaticus minor, zygomaticus major, um, the riseris, which is this one here, and then we've got the depressor anguli here. So now you're really starting to uh, define, actually, you know what? This one 
is you gonna fill out this area in here. All right, so this is where you get a lot of the the roundness of the side of the head. I'm just going to pull this out. All right, it's going to sit a lot like that. It definitely was a little bit too thin back in there. So again, um, when I'm looking at this, right, on, on how much it actually um, comes out, I really do a little bit more of a deep dive because <clears throat> that really helps kind of explain uh, the silhouette here. So I may go in and do a little bit more <clears throat> um, like research on, on what the actual, what that may look like, right? Said there's something to look into, but since then nothing from anyone I've asked. Uh, what's going on? What's going on? Yeah, man. Um, honestly, uh, this was this was the first software that I bought out of college or in college, um, and <clears throat> I paid you know it was eight hundred bucks for it, uh, and it has been the best money. Honestly, it's it's the absolute best money I have spent on software, um, hands down. The ZBrush Core is a little bit uh, new, so. Um, Pers I personally don't know because uh, I've always used the f the full the full package. Yo, what's up, Salem? How you doing, man? Okay, let's finish up the chin. We've gotten pretty good uh, amount of the face done. The only thing really left is the chin. So let's do that. All right, so we're looking at the chin. There's two major ones, um, the mentalis muscle that comes in this way and the depressor labi, which actually comes this way. Um, <clears throat> we, what did you miss? Um, we have done all of the muscles in the face so far, so quite a bit. And the carrot nose, all right. <laughs> I may have to go ahead and do the lips too. We'll see. We'll see. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab this dude and then uh, duplicate him. That guy. And then I'm going to bring him over. Um, but yeah, Zomboids, I'm I'm not sure, man. I I, I can't give you that answer. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not an employee. I'm just uh, one of the streamers that's... that's uh, doing some stuff on their channel. So, um, sorry that you haven't been able to get uh, an exact answer yet. What I would do is actually reach out to, I don't know, send an email to support at Pixelogic, I think is what it is. Um, and then see if you can get a direct answer from, from them. It's probably the best way to do it. But sorry, you haven't been able to get a, a, a clean answer yet, man. I'm I'm sure the answer's out there. We'll just have to find it for you, or you can find it for yourself. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. Okay. So uh, this one is the depressor layby. So it kind of uh, comes. So this one comes forward. This one goes a little bit more straight up and down, if not um, the opposite way, and then. The mentalis goes back the other way. So this is going to duck underneath. It's also going to duck underneath the um, the depressor anguli. If possible to pack your reference picture into a file, up them to the Pixo Discord. Um, I mean, honestly, uh, really, I mean, you could. It's all just Google searches. 
Um, it's super, super quick and easy Google searches. Basically, all I do is just do like face anatomy, muscle insertion points. Um, uh, the other anatomy -esque stuff uh, that I did the other day was just anatomy, muscle insertion points. And then you can just pick it, pick the, the stuff that you want. You know, you're like, oh, the bicular source, uh, the frontalis, the uh, whatever the hell that is. That's basically what I do. But you may, I, I can. I can just uh, give you the, the link to the search if you'd like. <laughs> no, this is ZBrush. Uh, this is actually CAD. Um, 2005 is what I'm using. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, if, if they don't, if it's not out yet, um, you know, you can get a, you should be able to get a yes or no for if it's available now. Um, the other, the tough thing what Doug is talking about is that if they're planning on implementing it, it when it's going to be implemented, that's, that's really, really tough to nail down from a company, like you said. So this is going to be underneath, it's going to come this way honestly if you can afford if you can afford the full package I would do it hands down um, it's worth every single cent um, and I don't know how many free upgrades have we gotten over the last you know inception um, the continued patches and and tools that they give us are, are just they're they're game changers, man. So, if you can afford the full package, uh, I would definitely go with it. Okay, so there's the depressor anguli, and then the mentalis is going to come underneath and just come this way. Oh yeah, even with, even the eleven hundred with uh, with key shot. I'm actually going to bring this back just a touch. Make a little bit more room for that mentalis. Okay, so we got that. Um, let's duplicate this guy real quick. And then we'll just scooch him over this way. We'll do a little rotate. We'll do a little rotate. That's not rotate. This is rotate. Okay, 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 okay. All right, and this is actually going to sit underneath everything. So that's going to come, let's say it's going to come there. This is going to pull back through. Hugo Leon, what's up, dude? Um, we have been up for about an hour and a half now um, and have done almost all the form-defining muscles in the face. So you've, unfortunately, you've missed quite a, quite a bit. But the nice thing is, is that, so this is, uh, all the face stuff is what we've done today. All the face uh, muscles here. Um, the nice thing, though, know, is that this will, is being recorded. Uh, and it should be available on the um, the Pixelogic Live or ZBrush Live, as well as uh, Pixelogic's uh, YouTube channel. So you're more than welcome to go back and and uh, hang out with us in retrospect. Hour and twenty eight minutes. Look at that. Thanks, Eagle. Okay. That's actually the majority of the form defining muscles uh, in in the bot in the uh, face. So th at least th those are the ones that uh, I I think about. Well, more than that. Um, uh, whenever I'm sculpting faces, um, the, the some of the major ones that I think about uh, are you know the three quarter view. Um, so what is what is the skull doing? Uh, in conjunction with uh, the zygomatic arch and like the masseter um, versus the zygomaticus uh, minor or major, 
right? So that's some of the things that I think about, you know, like when I'm, uh, you know, looking at the silhouette, um, especially this this whole area right up here, super important. Um, there's a lot of times you'll have the frontalis that sits up here, but then you'll have the skull, like this corner of the skull, you'll see a lot in um, in people, right? And then you have a little bit of like an indent here, and then uh, the rest of the uh, silhouette value is, is filled in by the temporalis here. And then you'll be able to see, you know, the ear back here, um, and then the zygomatic arch, which, which pokes out there. And then the rest of what makes up that profile is the masseter, right? Um, you did the muscles in this way for a games workflow? No, not necessarily. It's not really a game workflow. This is more um, kind of the things that I think about whenever I'm doing um, sculpting. So whenever I'm sculpting a face, whenever I'm sculpting a body, this is the stuff that I'm thinking about behind the scenes, you know, subconsciously. So I try to, like, once a year or so, go back and just do my own studies and just, you know, refresh my memory of, like, insertion points, you know? Like, um, like one of the big things for me last session, which was last week, um, we did all, the f all these muscles. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's right, the deltoid... Um, totally ducks in in between the brachii and uh, the the bicep, right, and connects to the humerus here. Like, oh, right, that's right. Everything kind of ducks in here. That's why you kind of got a little bit more of this like forward motion happening at the insertion point. You know, like, oh, okay, that's right. You know, I'm, I, I, you know. So it really helps you um, remember subconsciously, you know, what what you should be thinking about whenever you're sculpting. So I try to go back uh, once a year or so and, and redo this um, this exercise. It really helps me remember the things. And the really amazing thing is that once you have um, the human anatomy down, guess what you can do with creatures, right? It's the same thing, right? Just different proportions, right? So like if I'm looking at like a troll or something, right? You know, the head may be wider, but you're still going to have a lot of uh, that same anatomy, right? You know, maybe the maybe the skull will be more like a bear skull, right? You're know, like, all this up here is like indented more, and the temporalis like actually comes all the way up here, and like, you know, maybe maybe you're looking at you know a lion man or something. You know, you could take a look at, you know, how does the skull of the lion look, right? That kind of thing. So it's it's all of the knowledge that happens underneath the hood, um, that helps you create believable characters and then whatever however you apply that whether it's like um you know high-res sculpting for uh for action figures or toys um statues or <coughs> you're doing uh cinematic work um you know super realistic cinematic work or you're doing uh game design uh not game design but you know uh character uh character work for uh, for games it's all pretty much the same thing when it comes down to anatomy. It's just the applicable uh, part of it is is the different part, right? So these are all super important things to to keep in the back of your head uh, uh, to be a good sculptor, right? You need to know all these things that are happening. Yes. So, um, but for you know, for the face, that, that's why I really kind of just only care about the form defining ones um you know where the skin sits i said uh, probably i would take this a step further um and really go into like where all the 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 fat pockets are um and then how you know how does the nasolabial fold uh fill in uh and work around the anatomy you know what i mean if you really want to get into like super you know like blend shapes and and those types of things um, it's really, really important for knowing how, um, you know, where the skin is attached to the bone. Is it, you know, uh, does it, does it move with the muscle or does it stay attached? You know, those types of things. So I would, if I was going into more, more detail and taking this a lot further, if I had more time, I would definitely be going into now looking at like how the nasolabial fold falls in there. All right. So if we're looking at 
there is one more that I want to do. One more muscle that I want to do, which is this one. There's a sheet of muscle that goes over. <coughs> it's crazy. So, <coughs> excuse me. That goes over um, all of your neck muscles, and it connects to your clavicle here, and then it connects to the end, uh, to the underside of your mandible. And it's like it's this one. Like when you do this, and you see like all the striation. That's what that one's called. Um, it's called uh, plas uh, plat platysma. That's what it's called. It's like this sheet of muscle. It's pretty crazy. Let's actually do that real quick. Because it, it is of the face, technically. Well, uh, I don't know. It connects to the bottom of the jaw, so that's why I'm I'm interested in it. So let's let's actually do that real quick. Let's grab this dude. Let's do brush insert. We're gonna grab this. We're gonna do split. Mast. Actually, you know what we do? Grab this dude. Let's actually change that color to the object. Yeah, there we go. There we go. That's cool. We can do that. Stop it. Oh, come on. What the hell? There we go. Split unmasked. That's what I wanted to do first. Grab this dude. Yeah, that's what I wanted to do. Alright, now we go back to here. Alright, that's everything here. Okay, good. Uh, let's change that to a dark color. And then we'll do a fill object. Change that back to white. Bring everything back. There we go. That's a little bit better. Okay. So we're going to grab... Why did you do that? It's because I have two skeletons. <laughs> so this guy... Let's try that one more time. It's pretty annoying. Fill object. Let's change that back. Back to this guy. There we go. That's better. Okay. So let's grab this dude. Um, we'll do. Let's do 256. Throw that dynamesh. And then let's pull this into the area. Do this one. So it's this pretty crazy sheet of really, really thin muscle that lies over all the underlying muscles I was thinking it's cool cuz I didn't like I was like oh, how does all that work when you like do this thing and you're like I don't know. you're like oh it's an actual thin sheet of muscle <laughs> that's actually pretty cool Alright, so it's going to sit in here. I'm just going to go over everything. Uh, by the way, the video was very helpful for me. I watched the first one because I didn't intend to redo it. Anime. Awesome, man. Well, thank you. I'm I'm super glad that um, the, the stuff that the... the the stuff that I do helps. That's kind of one of my favorite things is doing teaching. So, I mean, it means a lot, man. Appreciate it. Okay, so this is going to come down here. And this actually uh, connects all the way down to your clavicle. I really should find out where exactly and how far. Let's actually do, let's, let's do that real quick. Let's do that real quick, because we could get into some some troubles if we don't. Uh, so I said uh, plat platysma. So let's do platysma muscle. There we go. It's 
crazy, right? Look at that. That's that's actually a little bit weird. <laughs> Look at this one. Oh, it actually goes over the clavicle. Or does it does it actually go right into What's really cool is like you can actually like flex these the muscles, you know, and like feel actually where they pull from, you know? It actually does come up. Like when you, when you do this a lot, it actually pulls lower than your clavicle. That's crazy. I thought it actually uh, connected to your clavicle. But it looks like it connects um, into the... Hmm. Now I'm, now I'm really... I'm curious. All right, everything says it goes over the clavicle and up and above. I thought it actually connected. All right. Apparently there's like some weird connection stuff. And right, kind of like interweaving. So for ours, we're just going to connect to the bottom of the mandible. Uh, this is the uh, the platysma. It's a sheet of muscle that goes from the bottom of your mandible um, down and connects over into the top of your pectoralis. It's crazy. It's crazy, man. So let's actually, looks like it actually comes out here. And we'll just, we'll just, we'll just do a little bit of the neck shape to it. Look at this. I tr again, I try to stay as low poly as possible when it comes to, to blocking this stuff in. Um, mostly because it's just, it's a lot easier to, to manipulate and stuff. And stuff, that's a technical term, by the way. In case you didn't know. And stuff. I'm just gonna I'm for for my own personal reasons, I'm just gonna leave it at the clavicle because uh for my studies, I think it's important for me to see where a lot of the bone insertion points are. So that's what I'm gonna do. Again, it's a good reminder to to know like this is really just for personal study. It's not supposed to be exactly accurate. Uh, it's not a production model. Um, this is not a test of the emergency broadcast system. This is just for my own, my own personal and your benefit. I'm doing this for you guys. All right, uh, and then let's actually just do a quick little trim dynamic and cut some of this down here. A little bit too thick. So yeah, this one's this one's a pretty crazy sheet of muscle. But a fun one. I like I like um I like doing this one with uh with my facial anatomy um because it connects to the jaw. It's a lot of fun. Let's just pull that guy out. Let's pull this dude out a little bit. And then um, it looks like it actually connects a little bit more uh, above, but for my own personal amusement, I'm just going to connect it to the bottom of the jaw here. I'm going to pull these guys a little bit closer. Okay, that's good. Well, he looks a little weird without lips and a nose, huh? <laughs> Let's round this guy up. Clean it up a little bit. Alright, 
Um, questions? Anybody got questions? I think you guys are all learning with me here. Guys, everybody's doing good. Thinking maybe I should do lips on them. What do you guys think? Could try to do lips. Let's try to do lips. We've got uh, about 20 minutes left, so might as well. <laughs> See the news. Yeah, I know, right? Metal Gear Solid the game. A little bit, right? All right, let's let let's let's do some lips. How about that? Uh, okay, we'll just do brush insert. Go back here. We'll just throw throw in one of these. We'll do split unmask. Yeah, it looks kind of funny without lips. So we'll just do lips real quick. And I think it'll be better because the um, abicularis porous will actually come out more to meet those the the top side of the lips and bottom side of the lips. So I think it's a good idea. So let's do this dude. There we go. Uh, let's uh, dynamish this guy. There we go. All right. Let's make some lips. So lips are always a little bit funny. Um, they're they're pretty hard. They're they're actually fairly complicated shape. Um, so it usually takes a little bit to to get them correct. So bear with me. And they always look like crap, right until they look good. <laughs> I may need some more resolution on this guy. Yeah, let's actually go up to 512. That's a little bit better. So we're going to just block him in real quick. Let's do that. Uh, let's duplicate them. Let's turn off that. Let's just do that for quickness. And then we'll sculpt it back in. There you go. I think. Should we ship it? Ship it! <laughs> no. Nope, nope. Yeah, it's, it's like hands, right? Like... If they look bad, that's bad. If you take a little bit of extra time and make them look good, um, it makes a lot, a big, big difference. All right. So let's look at the anatomy of a lip. All right. So top lip has that, and then we've usually got form here. And it all depends too on the type of lip. Right, um, male, female, um, nationality, all kinds of things go into the shape of the lips. So we'll just do something fairly standard. This is a male, so I'll take that into account um, when I'm doing this. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sculpt up the muscle a little bit here to meet the lips. Maybe we should add a little bit more too. Maybe we'll go to 512 on this dude. A little bit more. There we go. Alright, we've got that. Uh, 
Uh, these are going to meet fairly close. this closer okay um, I'm gonna pull this dude up and I think the actual muscle should be up a little bit more. I think it comes down a little bit too far. Again, everybody's a little bit different, so take that into account. Um, now when I start getting to this level, um, I, I like start when I'm doing a little bit more sculpting uh, to the muscles. I like sculpting in the direction that the muscle flows. We get a little bit kind of more of this striation as I'm actually sculpting it up, so it becomes pretty helpful. And maybe we'll actually bring all this stuff back a little bit. Let's bring Uh, for me, actually, um, R8 has been very stable. I haven't really had any crashes, uh, and I've 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 put it through the ringer for quite a bit. So um, for me, it's actually been pretty stable. Without going too much further into it, and I may, I may uh, call the lips here. I, mean, I can, I could sit and sculpt on the face for hours, but I think for for this particular exercise, um, I won't go too crazy. Yeah, let's do that for now. Okay. Cool. We've got about uh, 10 minutes left or so. I don't return with interview stuff. Um, I really want to. I actually uh, I have some other people lined up to do it. I just have to find time. Um, I've just been pretty crazy busy with the whole um, job searching and um, hanging out with family and stuff. So I really, uh, I do want to do more. I actually have uh, some really cool people lined up to do it. Um, I just have to find time to do it. So it'll probably be fairly soon. Um, people get busy. So I like, um, after I ask people, I like to kind of do it sooner than later. So it's in the works. It's in the works. I get I do I do get a lot of requests <laughs> for more of those. People seem to 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 dig them, so I'm I'm happy. When when people get good stuff out of them, I'm happy to do them, you know. Yeah, um let's see. Any other questions? Let's see. Questions, questions, anybody questions? Um, I guess we can kind of continue with the rest of the body. Um, so for the face, uh, just to wrap up the face, um, that's this is pretty much what I think about whenever I'm sculpting. Um, and then, you know, obviously the nose is, is mostly cartilage and stuff. So, um, <coughs> excuse me. So I think about, you know, like how how the lips roll around the teeth, um, how, you know, where they sit. 
Uh, you know what? That's really bugging me. Um, let's do this. Uh, the difference between clay buildup and clay tubes. Um, usually, so what I when I'm when I have that question, it's really, um, I I I basically will just come in and and practice with it, you know, and and test it out. So let's take this guy up to like a crazy resolution, like five twelve. Yeah, so smooth that out. So usually what I'll do is so with clay clay build up, right? It's so if I'm constantly on here, the biggest difference is that if I'm constantly doing this, it will uh pull it out more, right? Where I'm looking at um uh B C for clay tubes. Or is it clay tubes? It really like it doesn't do that that same thing. It stays at that certain level of of uh, depth, right? So that's the major difference between clay tubes and clay buildup. All right. So like if I'm just rolling, 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 it stays at that same particular depth. But if I'm on clay buildup, it actually will build it up more. So that's the major difference. The help. Do, 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 do. Um, yeah, it's it's basically clay tubes, but it just continues building. Yeah, man. Um, it's really just kind of about you know, um, when I have those same questions, I'm like, oh, I'll just I'll just try to figure out like what the difference is doing. Just just test it out, you know. Okay. So, actually, you know what? let's adjust these guys real quick since I adjusted the Oris, Picularis Oris. Grab this dude. And pull him up here. Like that. So, again, um,. So this is just a, a study I try to do uh, <clears throat> probably about once a year um, where I just go back and remember the form-defining muscles um, so that my subconscious can have a refresh. Um, it's kind of like taking your driving course again, you know? You're like, oh, yeah, that's right. I kind of forgot about that thing. Oh, yeah, like we have the those muscles there and we get that one there. and Okay, like the, the silhouette of the temporalis will actually be part skull, part um, uh, temporalis, and part zygomatic arch. Okay, right. And then the masseter, depending on the shape of the mandible, you know, is the mandible, like, flared out more? Does he have a thin masseter? Does he have a thick masseter? You know, like, does he, is he, like, big and bulky dude? Or is he, like, super skinny? Then you may have, like, a little bit more of a hollow in here. You know, something like that, where you... <clears throat> I have this, this is kind of like sunken in more, you know? Um, so like, just taking that to the next level of saying, okay, well, what kind of person is this? You know, is he overweight? You know, is he um, super uh, thin? Uh, is he gangly? Is he, you know, uh, does he have a, a large skull? Does he have a small skull? That kind of stuff. And then really take that to the next level of, you know, like, is he dehydrated, you know, like, are things sunken in more, you know, like, uh, yeah. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much, um, what I think about, uh, underneath everything, right? Uh, man, I wish I had time to do the legs. Legs are fun. Yeah, exactly. You're strong. You're if you continue to reinforce your uh, 
your foundation, <clears throat> the things that you build on that will be stronger, right? So um, I am starting work next Monday. So I'd, I'd like to continue this, actually. So I think next round, um, when I do get back to it, we're going to do uh, at least the thigh. Right? The thigh is, is fairly complicated, especially when it comes into like the hips um, and filling out the form of uh, the buttocks and stuff. <clears throat> um, may not get into the, the, uh, the calf. But I'd love to be able to do uh, at least the uh, the rest of the hips and uh, the thigh. Because they're super important. Yeah, man. Um, it was it was definitely fun. Um, we will uh, we'll do more very soon. I really kind of want to uh, get back on track with, with my own stuff. Um, the character that I was working on... Actually, you know what? Now that I, I got a, a quick minute or so... You know what? We should probably save this. It's probably a good idea to save this. Just saying. Yeah. Let's save that. Um, so let me... I've actually been having trouble with my external hard drive. So if this crashes, we'll call it. <laughs> um, so give me one second. Du -du 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 -du. Hold on. All right, hopefully this is going to work. I'm reading, not writing to it, so I had problems writing to it the other day, so let's hope. Let's hope it works. Because <clears throat> if my hard drive is screwed, I'm done. I'm screwed. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't know, Gary, why it was blocked. I'm not sure. Were you timed out before for some reason? Like in another stream? Thanks, Doug. Yeah, man. It was good to see you too, buddy. Thanks for coming to hang out. Feel spoon, man. Hey, look. It worked. I love how, like, it opens and then goes right to, like, saving. <laughs> so this is the other guy that I was working on uh, during the Pixelogic stream. So I did all of this uh, during the streams. Uh, this is, I don't know if you guys, you guys, most of you guys have seen this one. Um, but this is, this is the Horizon Zero Dawn fan art that I was working on. Oh yeah, yeah, that's, and that's cleaned up. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, I did this during uh, the Pixelogic streams, and then... Um, I showed how to break it all down into uh, getting it ready for Retopo. Um, and then what I'm planning on doing is uh, picking this up on my own stream. So if you guys want to um, follow me on my own channel, definitely feel free to. So the plan is to take this guy and do Retopo in um, Moto, uh, UVing in Moto, uh, baking in Marmoset Toolbag 3, and then uh, texturing in Substance Painter. So I definitely have a ton more work to do on this guy, uh, but it's going to be on my own channel um, when I have time. So if you'd like to uh, follow along, please definitely feel free to. Um, if you guys haven't followed uh, ZBrush Pixelogic here, definitely give uh, the Pixelogic channel here a follow. Um, there's some really, really amazing other artists that are going to be streaming soon. Um, I think somebody else is later tonight. Um, and then we've got all kinds of, uh, of great artists, so stay tuned. Dude, that was like right on time. Holy cow. Sweet. Um, so stay tuned. If you guys are interested in trying out ZBrush, uh, there is a free trial button. Uh, I believe it's still uh, on the bottom of this page. Um, if you're looking for more um, <coughs> learning material, go to uh, zclassroom.com. It's a really, really great source. Um, also, I encourage you to uh, check out all the other artists that are uh, streaming on here and their own channels as well as um, their own YouTube channels. Uh, they've got great, great content, so stay tuned. There's a lot more coming. Um, 
And uh, thanks for hanging out today, guys. I hope you guys had fun. Um, hope you guys learned a thing or two. Uh, but most of all, I hope you're inspired to go make your own cool stuff. So do it. Go make some cool stuff. Put the video game down and make a video game. All right, guys. Take it easy. Thanks uh, for all the great support and uh, questions today. And we will see you guys soon. Take it easy, everybody.